All right. In the last sections, we were talking about what parallel lines gave us, and now we're going to talk about perpendicular lines. And hopefully you have a copy of these, and you've tried to look over it and make sense of it, because I, I've got my notes filled out, and I'm just going to walk you through it and explain why the blanks are filled in the way they are. So here goes. So in this first one, if we know that 1 is congruent to 2, and we've got a linear pair here because they make a line, so then we know that both of these have to be 90 because they have to add up to 180 and be equal, so we know it's perpendicular. And so I say this is the congruent angles linear pair tells me that I have perpendicular lines theorem. I just tell it like it is. All right, and if we know that n is perpendicular to m, we know that all four of these angles are right angles. That just sort of makes sense. We've talked about how perpendicular lines form right angles. This is just specifically saying perpendicular lines intersect at four of them. Now, if you have two lines that are perpendicular and you've got adjacent angles inside of there, you know that they're two complementary angles because you know that this is a right angle, so you know they add up to 90. I call this the adjacent angles between a perpendicular are complementary. If we have two parallel lines, A and B, and M is perpendicular to A, then M has to also be perpendicular to B. And so if M is perpendicular to one of the parallel lines, it also has to be perpendicular to the other. It's called the perpendicular transversal theorem, is the technical word. Um, but I say if a line is perpendicular to line A, it's also perpendicular to line B, which is perpendic uh, sorry, parallel to A. All right, and the final theorem is if you have A perpendicular to M and B perpendicular to M, they're both perpendicular to the same line, so they must be parallel. A is perpendicular to M. B is perpendicular to M, so they must be parallel. So what we call this is the lines perpendicular to a transversal theorem. Basically, the lines perpendicular to a transversal, M being the transversal, they are parallel to each other. So if two lines are perpendicular to the same line, then they are parallel. So write the theorem that justifies this. Well, we're saying A is perpendicular to B, and we know that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, and so what we said was the congruent angles form a linear pair, so that tells me that they're perpendicular. This is the corresponding angles one. Angle 1 is 54 degrees because this is a right angle, so these two are complementary because adjacent angles in between two perpendicular lines are complementary. So subtract from 90 and you get 54. All right, is C perpendicular to D? S sorry, C parallel to D, those two lines mean parallel. So, is it parallel? Well, we don't know by line B, but we do know by line A, um, because line A is perpendicular to both of those. And so that's the perpendicular transversal theorem. Um, because A is perpendicular to C and A is perpendicular to D, that means they both must be per parallel. Um, is B perpendicular to D? Well, we know it's perpendicular to C, and we know that C is parallel to D because we just proved that. And so because it's parallel to D, C is parallel to D, it's got to have the same relationship. You could bring up corresponding angles here if you wanted to. Because we have parallel lines, corresponding angles must be congruent. Um, but I want to use what we were talking about today, so that's the perpendicular transversal theorem. Lines perpendicular to one parallel line, it must be perpendicular to the other parallel line. 
Okay, still moving. So, how would we know that they're parallel? Well, first off, x and x, so these two angles must be congruent. And so, because we have a congruent linear pair set, we know that this must be perpendicular. Secondly, because j is perpendicular to h and j is perpendicular to k, we know that these two must be parallel. Lines perpendicular to transversal theorem. How do we know that these are perpendicular? Sorry, M and N are parallel for the same reason that this is. Lines perpendicular to a transversal. Same exact thing. All right, find some value of X. We could have done this last chapter, but these are vertical angles, and so they have to be congruent. Or you could say, well, this is perpendicular, so these are all 90 degrees. And so x plus 25 has to equal 90. So then x has to equal 65. Perpendicular, so this is 90. And so this angle plus this angle has to equal 90. Those two angles have to be complementary. And so you set up a complementary. Again, resist the urge to say, oh, they must be equal. Take the time, set up your equation correctly. 51 minus 11 is 40. Subtract your 40, you get 50. And then divide by 2. All right. Let's take our time on this one. Find the measure of the indicated angle. All right. Well, so 1 is 90 because it's been marked as such. And because 1 is 90, all of these are right angles. If this is 60, that leaves 2 to be 30 because this is complementary. These two angles are complementary. And if 2 is 30, sorry, well, if this is 60, then 3 is across from 60. It's the vertical angle of 60. And so they're congruent. And 4 is vertical with 30 with angle 2. And then, because we know that this means it's a right angle, 3 and 5 must be complementary. So 5 must be a 30 degree angle. And because 5 and 6 are complementary, because all of these were right angles from the perpendicular, we know that that must be 60. So I've got that outlined on your notes as to the reason why the vertical angles, complementary vertical angles, things like that. And finally, use the diagram. Is R parallel to S? Well, R, we don't have any relationship with M and N, so we can't say anything. We don't know anything. Is M parallel to N? Well, S right here, we've got these two 90 degree angle marks. We've got the perpendicular. So S is perpendicular to M, S is perpendicular to N, so yes, lines perpendic, sorry, excuse me, perpendicular to a transversal. And finally, is S parallel to T? Well, if we notice this and this, S is perpendicular to N, and T is perpendicular to N, because they're both perpendicular to the same transversal, they must be parallel. So there you have it, using perpendicular lines to show parallel, or use parallel to show perpendicular. Good luck as you work through these proofs.